Today is November 6th. I just wanted to do a summary of all the things that took place last month, October. Good discoveries. Good discoveries. October 1st. October 1st, as you know, October 1st with the project, with the system that I've developed, my only, my only goal now is to practice it, to adopt it. So, on October 1st I was doing just that. How? I wrote down the principles on a rubber band, and I was trying to follow them as well as I could. Now, um, <coughs> the principles that I wanted to write down, the principles that I wanted to adopt, or that I was practicing, it's just it's just different notes that uh, it's just different notes uh, from the system. I just wanted to engrave the things that I that were already in there. So basically, I just summarized it into different into some words and was just uh, adopting them. I was just embodying them, embodying the emotion, the 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 meaning behind the words. So that's what I was doing. The words that I was practicing at the moment were these. Number one, instinct. Number two, awareness. I was paying attention to my instinct and to my awareness. Number three, memory. Number four, deeming, which is an, uh, is, is an essential one. And number five, value. As I was uh, going through these through these, I was always embodying these words, the meaning of these words, and kind of like analyzing the meaning of them. Um, I was also going through my notes, and I noticed that there was something that was similar, or something that had a similar feeling than instinct, of, with instinct, which was rudimentary action. Why? Because rudimentary action is doing something without really knowing, you're just following something it's something that you can't learn by explaining. It's something that you just do. You learn how to do it just by doing it, right? And that's kind of how instinct works. There's no instruction. There's no verbal instruction given, do this. There's not even an, a conscious instruction sometimes. It's just, you just go with the flow. You just go with what feels right. That is instinct. Rudimentary action is the same way. Except that uh, rudimentary action covers more than instinct. It also covers everything that actually, you know what? rudimentary action and instinct so so that's that's the point when I realized rudimentary action and instinct are kind of intimately connected beyond that I also noticed that awareness was also born out of instinct because we don't practice awareness consciously but a rudimentary action or rudimentary learning involves instinct and awareness why because to perform a rudimentary action for the sake of learning you need to have. You need to go with. You need to go with what your instinct is telling you. It's it's an, it's a, it's an instructionless action that is instinct. But you also to uh, turn it into learning. You need awareness. You need to pay attention to what you're doing, and learn from it. That's what. That's kind of the uh, concept of rudimentary action in the system. So as I was paying attention to instinct, as as I was paying attention to the rudimentary action, here's what I felt kind of felt like I found my center. I was, I felt like I was finally in touch with myself. Like I was in touch with my instinct. Like I could feel why I did the things that I did when I paid attention to my instinct. So as I was walking, as I was trying to embody the meaning of these words and as I was trying to embody the meaning of instinct, I noticed that when I walked, when I looked, I did it more wholesomely because I was paying attention to why I was doing it. And the reason why I was doing it, it was my instinct. So I felt like I found my center. But not only that, not only did I find my center, but because of what I'm working on as far as the system, I found this, I found my center. I labeled it, I labeled it instinct, and I have it as a reference for future use. I anchored it so that I could have access to it whenever I want. So that's why, that's why I guess this method is uh, 
the method that I'm practicing or my the method of my ambition is not just finding yourself but kind of creating a formula to it so I didn't just find my center and it wasn't just that one moment but I'm trying to pave a road I'm trying to build a formula toward it so that not only me but like anyone that studies the formula can also be led to the same destination. So not only did I feel like I found my center, but this was more exciting. This was a this was a more exciting discovery because I was also able to labor it, label it, anchor it, and have it ready for future use and future analysis as well. So, and that center, what is that center? That center is instinct. And as long as you pay attention to your instinct as you're doing things you'll find, you'll know why you are doing things. Everything that you do will now feel like it has a reason. And what is that reason? Well, the most natural, the most primal reason is that, the instinct. So instinct and rudimentary action. So I found that. So first I learned that awareness itself is a rudimentary action. And as a rudimentary action, you learn how to do it by becoming aware and performing awareness on that you are performing awareness. So a rudimentary action, first you do it and you learn how to do it by paying attention to it or by becoming aware of it. And if, rudiment, if awareness is a rudimentary action itself, the way you learn how to become aware is by doing it, but also paying attention or becoming aware of you doing it. So you perform awareness and then you perform awareness on that awareness that you're already doing. And the, the way that you're already doing it is by instinct. You do things by instinct and you become aware of them. And when you become aware of them, it allows you to kind of pay attention to how you're doing it and then control it so that you can do it at will. And that is the whole point of rudimentary action. You do something by instinct, but to learn for, for you to learn how to control it consciously, you don't just do things by instinct, you become aware of them and you kind of like, you kind of feel into how the ways that you are doing it instinctually. And then when you get familiar with that, then you'll be able to control those instinctual, uh, those instinctual levers that you pull, those levers that you pull instinctually, then you'll be able to perform it consciously. So instinct plus awareness is rudimentary action. So another thing that I, that I went through on October 1st. I was trying to figure out where pain was coming from, where pain comes from. I was trying to figure out why I was feeling pain because as far as the system and as far as the primary project, um, I know that pain does not necessarily have to exist, but for some reason it exists. And, and, um, and it's kind of a, at this point, I kind of knew that it was kind of an agreement that, you know, it's kind of a belief that caused pain to exist. That there was some belief or some agreement that allowed for pain to exist in one's life. But I was trying to find out more about it. I was trying to look more into it. So as I was thinking about how my instinct is basically automatic decisions that are programmed into my behavior patterns. I began wondering when and how was the programming for certain pain made. So at this point I knew that that uh, I had an instinct and that instinctually I just thought of things as painful. I thought of certain things as painful because, you know, pain is relative. There are certain, there are certain sensations that I think are pain that other people think are not. And there's other sensations that um, other people think think are painful that I don't think they are so f just from that you know uh, that's kind of like thinking about things differently that's exhaustive uh, exhaustive options just from that you get to see that pain is kind of a uh, pain is kind of an agreement right so uh, pain is relative and it depends on beliefs kind of like thinking about that um, but I also knew that these decisions, these agreements, they happen automatically in the back of the my in the back of my mind. I can't just say, "Oh, okay, I think this is painful. I will no longer think this is painful." It comes from 
Uh, that's not going to stop the pain, but it comes from something deeper, something else. And so I was trying to figure this out at this point. So I began wondering when and how was the programming for certain pain made. So I knew pain was an instinctual decision that I made when there was something, when there was something that I, that I didn't quite agree with. My mind and my body automatically responded with resistance and with pain. And so I'm, I was trying to, I'm trying to figure out, at this point, October 1st, I'm trying to figure out when and how the programming was, uh, the programming for pain was made, and maybe how I can change it and how it can be changed. So, for example, I can remember a time when I was not afraid or prejudiced against certain types of people. But along the way in my life, uh, I made associations between a certain trigger and something painful. And this association could have spread from and to many places, and now we have a neurosis field. So, uh, you agree that one thing is painful, so th this is kind of what I thought about. Uh, as I was, uh, at this point I was at a gas station, and I was just like, thinking about why, why I am, uh, why I have a prejudice against certain types of people that behave in a certain way or that are a certain way. And so, the origin of that, the origin of the aversion that I have against that type of person, it didn't have to begin with people any, uh, at first, it doesn't necessarily have to begin with people, but the pain could have started with something small, something more primal, and it could have spread and I could have made associations uh, from that thing to something else, and from that something else to a, to a type of behavior, and from that type of behavior to a certain type of person, and it just that 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 first that original aversion it just kind of spreads everywhere, and it spreads into other aspects of life and many other as and many other um, aspects and layers of life. So, for example, here's an example. Let's say when you're little, uh, for, well, the first thing that you need to learn is that. Uh, is that uh, is that uh, physical pain is bad so if you get cut is bad right so let's say uh, you, you're probably born with this instinct but let's say you're not born with any instinct and you cut your finger and you're, you're not let's say you're not born with the instinct that cutting cutting your skin is bad so you cut your finger and you say oh cool I cut my finger and and but then and, and then you cut your other finger and then now you're just cutting all your fingers then your mom sees you with your bloody fingers and she's like what did you do to yourself stop that and so because you know you're cutting your fingers so now your mom is kind of training you to believe that cutting your fingers is wrong and she's training you to not do that and not just your fingers, but anything that penetrates your skin. So now you associate cutting, the sensation of cutting and the sensation of skin penetration, you associate it with not something that should not happen. You just, you just agreed with yourself that it should not happen. And so whenever you feel a sensation that resembles or that reminds you that of something that might penetrate your skin, you have an aversion you have you kind of made that an un unconscious decision that it should not happen and you do whatever you you do whatever it takes for it to not happen so that's the first step a response to pain second step now um somewhere along your childhood uh, along your childhood there's a cat that bites you now because your cat now because a cat penetrated your skin now you believe that cats are bad so, first pain, now cats. Why? Because cats cause pain. Third step, uh, you see an old lady with a cat. And now because old ladies hang out with cats, now, you, now you're afraid of old ladies because old ladies have cats and cats are bad because cats cause you pain. Cats penetrate the skin, which is something that should not happen. And if old ladies have cats, then you gotta stay away from old ladies because old ladies have cats. And then you see an old lady at a retirement home, and now you're staying away from a retirement home because, uh, some you know, some unconscious decision. You associate cats with old ladies, and now you associate old ladies with retirement homes. 
So now you stay away from retirement homes, you stay away from old ladies, and you stay away from cats, uh, just because of all these associations. Now, the word retirement has the word tire in it. So now you're afraid of tires, you're afraid of wheels on a car. Uh, just because whenever you hear the word tire, it kind of reminds you of retirement home, which has a bad connotation that kind of carries a bad feeling. And so for some reason, you just don't like tires. And you don't know why. It's just something inside you, right? So it could go into many other directions. Maybe you associate old ladies with the color white because, you know, they have white hair and now you're afraid of the color white and so you don't like vanilla ice cream, so it could go into many other places. It's a silly example, but it gets the point across. It starts somewhere, the neurosis starts somewhere, the decision against the belief against a certain situation begins somewhere and it kind of spreads to all these aspects of your life. And that's kind of how it works. So in October 1st, I was making these associations, I was, uh, I was just, you know, thinking about these things and I was still trying to figure out how did pain originate? Because I still haven't hadn't figured that out. I kind of mentioned something that um, after the fact about how pain could have originated, but at this point I had I had nothing. I was just following patterns. So I was thinking about this, how did pain originate? And I kind of set up myself an archetype. That's one of the things. Uh, it's kind of exhaustive options. You think of different things. Archetype, the ideal scenario. You, uh, exhaustive options, you think of an ideal scenario. An ideal scenario would be someone who does not experience any pain. Imagine a, a situation in which, you know, someone who does not experience uh, any pain. That's before any pain was, uh, any pain was created. So I create this archetype. So I gave myself an archetype an ideal. So I use this ideal to compare it to the situation to kind of figure out what the difference is and how do I get to the ideal. A truly clean slate would not feel pain. A tr someone with a clean slate. Someone before, before they know what pain is. It would just perceive extreme sensations, but it would be a smooth, neutral perception of, a, of an extreme sensation. So the, so there, there, it would just be a clean perception, a smooth perception. There would be no aversion against this sensation. And so now I'm wondering, okay. So you're at the state. You're at this. You're at the state. You're at this origin. You're at this original state with a clean slate. Where there's no such thing as pain. How, and why is pain born? What makes pain? What makes the first aversion? And as I thought about this, I observed that the first pain is simply an observation of a sensation. So, here's where pain comes from. Here's, here's how pain is created. Pain is simply an observation of a sensation with a conscious decision against it. In simpler words, when you bite your finger, you may experience the sensation of flesh being ripped from your bones, but you will not feel it as pain until you decide that the sensation that the sensation that you feel is one that should not be felt. Until you decide that the sensation that you feel should not be felt, until you make that decision, it's just sensation. But before that, this yeah, before that decision, it's just a sensation. But until you make that decision, when you make that decision that it should not be felt, then it becomes pain. Because why? Because it is a sensation that you believe that should not exist. And that's what creates pain. Therefore, someone has to teach you to decide that, this, that a certain sensation must not be experienced. And that's how pain begins. So this is what I wrote in my, in my journal for August 1st. It begins by your decision and belief. So uh, this this whole thing that I'm saying in front of the camera is, is what I wrote on 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 August uh, no on October first. So I'm just I'm just kind of looking at my notes here. So it begins by your decision and belief that such and such should not occur when it occurs your automatic decision kicks in so it starts off like that you, you train your mind to kind of make that decision that when this happens um, 
When this happens, you should stay away from it. And it does everything in its power and its panic manual to keep it from happening. So after I analyze this and after I figure this out, that pain is a sensation plus a decision against it, then I started going into this. I started analyzing more of the essence. Pain is sensation plus a decision against it. So I started analyzing the decision against it. Now that I'm analyzing the, the decision that creates pain, is I, I realize that to decide that the present is unacceptable, it logically means that what is happening is against your will. To decide that something that's happening you don't want it to happen, is to decide that whatever is happening is going against your will. That's kind of the definition of it. Pain means that something is being done against your will. And what is something that's being done against your will? Against will? Contra volition. When volition is the practice of instilling your will into things, uh, contra volition would be pain. Pain is contra volition. Pain is against your will. So that's the definition of contravolition. So now I've, now I've come up with a new topic. Uh, this will fit into the negative system. This contravolition concept will fit into the negative system. And contravolition is what allows for pain to exist. Because with that belief, you, with that, with that idea, with that belief, you start to believe that things happen against your will. And when you start to believe that, you start to believe in things and you start to believe that things happen that you don't want to happen. And the more you respond to pain, the more you believe in pain, the more you assume and you train your mind to believe that you have no control of situations and that things are happening against your will. So the more you practice pain, the more you believe in pain and the more you perceive pain, the more you believe that you have no control over certain things. That's anti-volition, contra-volition. The creation of pain, the contra-decision, is also a creation of an adversary will, and also a will and a power that is not yours. So by believing in pain, or by making a decision to believe that things happen that should not happen, you create pain, first of all, you create, you create things that are out of your control, so now things exist that are out of your control, and now you create an adversary will, a will sometimes a will that is against you, sometimes a will or a fate that I guess against what you want. So this contra decision, this belief that things happen against you is the beginning of a, is the beginning of a broken mind. And therefore to fix this, reach inside yourself and undo this decision that a certain sensation or event should not occur. And if you've seen from the definitions, the way to fix this is to practice volition, to practice infusing your will into events and into your actions, into everything that happens, so that you can visualize, not, you can not only feel, but you can visualize how you're in control, how you have control over all the events that happen. And this is the concept behind eternal volition. volition. When you practice eternal volition, that is anti-pain because now you're controlling things. Now, this there is no adversary will. Now you're just making everything happen. And all the sensations that you feel is just kind of like a dance with yourself. That was October 1st. On October 1st, I analyzed, number one, instinct. Where does instinct come from and how it's, con and how it's uh, related to rudimentary action? And number two, the origin of pain, which is a uh, decision. Could be an unconscious, uh, maybe a conscious decision that becomes unconscious. Um, but it's a decision.